Hello, and welcome to this VoIP nugget about working with Voice over IP gateways, final part, three of three. I'm Marco Lichti at Patent in Alp Networks, and it's a pleasure to see you back for part three. What we're going to cover today is a slightly updated agenda compared to what we announced um, based on feedback from our listeners. We'll cover today how to update the firmware on a Patent Smart Node, how to edit the configuration file that's generated by 3CX, how to access debug monitors, and what can you do in case of trouble. Let's attack the first subject immediately, updating the firmware. Um, so there are three easy steps. Uh, first, you download the firmware from upgrades.patent.com. This is free. Then you connect and discover the gateway, and you just import the firmware using the web interface. It's very simple, and let me show you how that works. So here we are on my computer. I'm going to open up the patent firmware upgrade site, which is upgrades.patent.com. There is a list of all the models that have firmware. Um, I have a smart node, obviously, and my model is 4638, which is contained in the 46XX category. If I go there, there is a myriad of files, and don't be confused. I want you to know that you have to look for maintenance release, and you always pick the latest one, which is the first one up here. Make sure on the 3.6 user interface that this firmware is supported. Smartware 5.3 is supported. So I'm going to download this firmware by clicking on the download button. I have to agree to the license agreement, that's normal. And I have to uh, authenticate myself to download. It's free to register. So the complete firmware download process is absolutely free to you. Just register, create your own username. I've already done that. Um, so I'm just going to enter my credentials and save the file. Back on my computer screen, I'm starting the SmartNode discovery tool, which finds my SmartNode. Prerequisite, of course, is that the SmartNode has been set up and is connected. If you haven't done so already, I suggest you listen to part two of this VoIP nugget, which explains exactly how to do that. Once you find it, you can open the web browser user interface of the smart node. The username is administrator, the password is empty. And here we go on the main smart node interface. Importing firmware is done in the import export section, same as for the configuration. And import firmware, you just very simply browse for the firmware file and you hit import. And then it'll take a while while the firmware is uploaded to the device. You can see a progress bar um, that shows you what is being done currently. Once it's done, here's how it presents itself. Please note that this red bar on top is normal. Uh, during the upgrade process, the only thing left to do is reload the device. Um, you have to confirm that, and I'm done. Next, I'm going to show you how to edit the configuration file of the smart node. Basis is that you have already created such a configuration file from 3CX. Part 2 of this nugget shows you exactly how to do that, so you might want to go back and listen to it uh, before you continue. Then I'm going to show you how you can use a simple text editor and edit aspects of this configuration. Here's my gateway configuration file. It has extension gvcfg. It's stored on my desktop. And I'm going to open that up with a text editor. Um, I prefer Notepad++, which is a free, t a powerful text editor. But because not everybody will have that installed, we'll try this with WordPad today for demo purposes. Um, this is a configuration file. It's a human readable text file. Each line presents one configuration command. And what I'm showing here is just the very uh, normal configuration that 36 creates. See the amount of work they take from you? Uh, imagine writing this yourself. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of the ISDN ports and we're going to switch it from point-to-point -point operation to point-to-multi-point -point operation. Um, point to point is used to connect a PBX or connect to a uh, German telecom line to connect PBXs. And point to multi point is used for an MSN line. So you see, here's a block um, of configuration called port BRI um, 00, 
that's the entire block here and this contains all the aspects of ISDN configuration on the smart node and you see here there is a line called protocol PP and that means point to point and I'm going to simply change that to PMP which means point to multi point I'm saving that and I'm done the only thing that's left to do is to import the configuration file onto the smart node and port 00 will be in MSN mode. Next up, how to access the debug monitors. Each smart node has a built-in protocol analyzer that can decode ISDN, SIP, FXO and FXS protocol. I'm going to show you how to access these monitors and in our example we're going to see a call from ISTN to SIP and how these messages look like when something goes wrong. Um, and here's how it works. I'm starting with the discovery tool as always, but this time, right-clicking on the line, I'm not going to choose web browser, but Telnet. This opens up a window. Um, I'm going to type in my login and password. Login is administrator, password is empty. Then I have to put the unit in enable mode. That happens by just typing enable. Now I'm ready to switch on debug monitors. I'm going to enable ISDN and SIP clear text monitors. So I have enabled ISDN and SIP debug monitors now and I'm going to make a call from ISDN to SIP. This call is going to be forwarded to the 3.6 phone system. Important point the extension that I'm calling within 3CX is not registered and there is no digital receptionist. See what's happening. I'm scrolling up to analyze this a little bit. First, you see a setup message. This is an ISDN message indicating the call setup. And you can see the calling party number in there and the called party number together with some more information. Scrolling down, you see the smart note sending back to the ISDN network a setup acknowledgement. Then you see the SIP invite that's being created based on this ISTN setup. You see that the invite is going to 10,000, which is the ID of the virtual line created within 3CX. And you see in the from and to headers, the calling and the called party numbers. This helps you debug stuff if, if the numbering isn't working accurately. Next up, there is a 487 or 407 proxy authentication required. So 3.6 tells the smart node to please authenticate himself. It does it, resending the invite with credentials. And this means that we can send now towards the ISDN network a call proceeding message. What happens next is we receive a SIP message back 480, temporarily unavailable. And this is exactly what 3.6 sends to the smart node when an extension is not registered and there is no other um, call routing um, rule defined for this call. So we acknowledge that and we send a disconnect message to the ISDN network and later on the other guy will hear the, the, the release tone and will uh, go on hook. I hope this was helpful enough regarding the debug monitors and last we are just going to see what to do in case of trouble. Well, the first thing I'd suggest um, is looking into the debug logs, both of 3CX, the yeah, server activity log, as well as in the smart node, as I just showed you. Next is to go to the 3CX forums at www.36.com slash forums. And then I suggest you to search for your problem first, because there's a high chance that somebody else might have had the same problem. If the problem is not there or you don't find it, post your problem there. Add your 36 version, your smart node version, the smart node model and firmware version, and if possible, also the firmware configuration file, especially if you modified it yourself. Add a Wireshark trace. That's something appropriate as well, because it shows all the SIP message flow and maybe it gives additional hints on what could go wrong in your case. And if you have specific questions about uh, smart nodes and, and their configuration, write to support at patent.com. This concludes part three of this VoIP nugget about working with voice over IP gateways. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, listen to the other VoIP nuggets at 36.com slash blog um, and visit the 36 and the patent websites. It was a pleasure to have you as my audience and take care.